Hi, my name is David. I'm a logic tutor here on Wiseant, and I'm um, uh, just going to answer a question for you about how to derive this. Um, uh, this is a basic derived rule, actually, of natural deduction, the distributive rule. And how do we derive this using fundamental rules, such as the introduction and elimination rules? And this is actually a pretty simple one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make use of a couple of assumptions. Because we have a disjunction as our premise. You see on the left there is the premise, P and Q or P and R. And then you see on the right, that's our goal, what we're trying to prove, that that entails that, or actually it's equivalent to saying that P and Q or R. So how do we get there? Well, the first thing we're going to do, we are going to make a decision right off the bat because we have a disjunction or an or statement as our as our premise we are going to do a proof by cases also known as a disjunction uh elimination uh rule the or elimination okay so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to assume that the first disjunct p and q is the case okay so we're going to oh whoops sorry uh, we are going to make the assumption p and q and later, we're going to come back and make the assumption P and R. And the idea here is that we want to arrive at the same conclusion for both of these. Okay. And once we've done that, we've proven that either way, whichever disjunct you choose, you arrive at the same conclusion. So the first thing we're going to do is break down P and Q. Namely, we are going to, first of all, this, is, this entails that P, right? P and Q, therefore P. That is the rule of and elimination. OK, you can always state either of these two things independently as true, either P and then we'll do the other one next. We'll say that Q for the same exact justification there and elimination from line two. So we know that P is Q and we know that Q is true. Now, there's another rule called or introduction, which means that any true statement, I can then add an or statement to it. So my name is David or. I am a concert pianist, okay? That is a true statement as long as my name is actually David, even if I've never touched a piano before, all right? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, right? I'm not gonna tell you either way, you still know that that whole statement is true. Same idea here, Q or R is true because Q is true. Um, and you know, a disjunction, an or statement only requires that one of the two things, at least one of the two things be true. So Q or R is also true. Now you'll notice that lines three and five, if you put them together, you're gonna get our conclusion, which is exactly where I was going with this in the first place, right? So now on line six, we arrive at that conclusion. We combine lines three and five using the and introduction rule, right? If you have two separate truths on two different lines, then uh, you are, uh, uh, you're allowed to combine them using an and. Now, the next thing we're gonna do here, okay, and I'm just going to, paste it on here because it's it's very redundant. We're doing exactly the same thing with the other assumption, the P and R, okay? We add two disjuncts, P and Q or P and R. And now we you see here, you can go through it separately once this recording is finished and see that we took exactly the same steps to reach exactly the same conclusion. Now that both disjuncts have given us the same conclusion, we are allowed to use the or elimination rule. And this is maybe the more, the most complicated out of the connective related, um, uh, you know, before you reach quantifiers, this is maybe the most complicated rule. We have to cite three things here, okay? So first of all, we say the name of the rule we're using, which is or elimination, okay? And then we have to cite a couple of, lines and ranges. So first of all, the original disjunctive statement on line one, the or statement, right? P and Q or P and R. That's our first citation. The second one is each sub. So then this, the first sub proof lines two through six. Oh, sorry. It looks like a 12. Okay. One, two through six. And then the second sub proof seven through 11. And now we've gone and proven what we set out to prove. So congratulations. If you're interested in learning more about logic or you're in a logic class and you need some help, look me up. I'm here on Wiseant. Thanks very much.